Hello people and welcome to Ultra ADHD. Ultra ADHD, Amazing Death and Huge Destruction is a game set in a land with no name. An evil god has brought forth the end times. The apocalypse. The few humans who are still alive hide behind walls, ruled with an iron fist. An ancient prophecy tells of a legendary hero who defeated the evil god long ago brought peace and prosperity to the people, and then mysteriously vanished. Perhaps you would be able to defeat the evil god yourself and save the world. So here goes. Just a random telephone. They answered the phone. Ah, oh, good. Let me talk to them. Can you please let me talk to them for a sec? Uh, hello there, mate. How are you doing this fine morning? God damn it, motherland, you hit my arm. Run some water on it, you big baby. Anyway, you started it, take care of it. Uh, sorry about that, mate. Just some sibling rivalry. Sibling rivalry, she says. You jumped on me, and whoa, mind your language, it's not fucking professional. Anyways, let's start from the top. How about you give us your name, lucky person? So, uh, it's Taylor, huh? Frankly, I'm not particularly fond of it, but who am I to judge? <laughs> oh, speak of the devil. See? I told you to just put some water on it. I'm bleeding and it didn't help. Do you see what I have to deal with? Every time I hear her speak, I feel like I'm walking one more step towards a hundred foot cliff. It's either living with a rebellious sister and her lack of tact, or living with the empty void and its lack of, you know, being alive. Dark thoughts aside, I'm sure you're even more confused now than you were before. Quick question if you will, hopefully you won't find it rude. Why the fuck aren't you responding to anything we say? Yes, I am interested to know why too. We've been talking for about 20 text boxes. And you never said a word. Ah, we are dealing with a silent protagonist. What? A protagonist who is also silent? Hmm, yes, I see. Very interesting indeed, yes. You don't know what that means, right? Nope. It means he doesn't speak. And we can basically make them do whatever we want. Oh? And because they're the protagonists, they're the only ones who can use weapons and save the world and the like. Oh. I'm going to regret telling you this, aren't I? Right. This isn't a damn visual novel. You want to get to g the action. I want to stop bleeding, so let's keep it short. Also, uh, fun tip. You can skip dialogue by holding tab. Look. We require your shooty shoot bang bang services. Meet us at the forest. You will be teleported to a location nearby in a few seconds. If you see Fatherland, tell him he's a dick for me. Have a safe trip. A loading screen? Forewarned. Lots of eyeballs. Attention, due to the end times, entry to the forest is strictly forbidden. What a shame, I can't read. The end times are upon us. The prophecy tells of a silent hero who'll defeat evil and save the world. Let us all pray to our god and savior for salvation. Wait, could it be you? I don't know, you tell me. Hold. Entrance to the forest is strictly forbidden due to high numbers of zombies. But wait, you look familiar. Let me check. Silent, blue skin, smoker. Yes, seems like I've hit the jackpot. Tado, right? I'll take that as a yes. Anyways, I've been ordered to grant you access to the forest, but you need some means of self-defense. Go to the item shop. Perhaps they have a spare crowbar or something. Get the fuck away from me if you want to keep breathing. Woof, motherfucker. No refunds. Apologies. But the store is closed due to the end times. 
We also regret to inform you that all of our assets and items were liquidated. The item shop will reopen once the Earth and or universe has been cleansed and or destroyed. Conditions may apply. Ah, your Tador. Yeah, I received an order to give you something. Said something about defeating evil. Something like that. Well, I do have this pipe. You can try it on the training dummy I just brought up behind you. Also, I'm legally obliged to tell you that this weapon's hotkey is one, and you can holster weapons using the H key. I'm sure you'll figure it out. This legal mumbo jumbo's gibberish to me. I have to aim first. This a pipe or a weapon? I mean, or a gun? Right, thanks for the weaponry. Rest in pieces to these guys. Lots of sheep. Smoking cool sheep. Whoa, who the fuck are you? Get the fuck away from me before your brains are splattered. You fu- Oh, you're not police? Sorry, we are- We're cool now. All of that's in the past now. No hard feelings, I hope. Look at them. All sheep to the slaughter. Kinda heart-wrenching when you think about it. But nah, man. I ain't one of them. Forced to jump over fences in dreams and shit. I used to do that every single day. Three years. Slave labor for minimum wage. Horrible job, I tell you. One day, it was my turn to jump over the fence in that one kid's dream. I was his 16th sheep. I just thought, nah man, I'm not going to do it. Then he started to beg. Said something like, please, I've yet to count all them. Let me count every single sheep. But I didn't move, and he just fell asleep. Now that I think about it, it does sound like some sort of fable for children, isn't it? It even rhymes. Well, I guess you pick up on that when you work with kids your whole life. Right, story time is over. My friend, I need some time to myself here. Alright, I'm armed. Good, it seems you have something. It's not much, but it'll do. One thing before you go. If you have any guts in your inventory, hit Q to eat some and heal. You can pick up guts using E. I do believe I said quite enough. Have fun. We are in hell. Um, Borekas are pastries made from phyllo dough and usually stuffed with cheese, mashed potatoes, mushrooms, olives, chickpeas. The dish originated in Turkey and was popularized in Israel by Turkish and Balkan immigrants. It is a notable and common dish in Israel cuisine. Why can't I cut you down? You have no power over me. I see guts over there. Thanks. This is too easy. Revolver ammunition? I have no gun. Oh. I need to take better care of myself. Workers films were a popular Israeli film genre. These films were usually comedies. I don't care about your shit. Why are there so many of you anyway? Uh, 
Just a random candle. Remember, gone get. I don't need to use this gun yet. Additional guts. Is that the entrance? I think so. Hey, we're over here in the corner. Make sure you get rid of these zombies before you come. Done. Wonderful, you've arrived. If you're wondering why we couldn't help, it's because we're NPCs. And NPCs in these sorts of games just kinda stand around, doing absolutely nothing, waiting for a protagonist to wake us up. That's a very blunt description, but not far from the truth. At any case, we have called you here for a very special reason. That reason is not, if to quote the great poet, Motherland here, Shorty Bang Services. Let me have some fun with this. We require your combat expertise. There, that's how you should say it. Basically, we want to bring down the developer of this game. Yes, you're being toyed with for the sake of some bullshit grand adventure. You've already experienced some of it now. Survival horror zombie first person shooter. Yeah, whatever he said. We have managed to hack into the system and break dancing NG's control of us. While we can't fight, we can teleport you and ourselves and say what we please. We want to give the power of free will to everyone. So you're going to just play along, but instead of fighting the final boss, you're going to kill Dancing Genji. We're basically going full JRPG here, using the power of friendship to kill God. God de- <clears throat> Are you Tato? That's great. What matters do you have with him? We are Tato's personal assistants. They're in a meeting right now. Do you want to leave a message? Tell me lies. Tell me sweet little lies. Motherland, Fatherland, and Tidor, you are under arrest. For what? Conspiracy against the developer and massacre of the zombie species. Anything you say can and will be used against you. You'll be representing yourself in the trial. A trial as in legal trial? Correct. In fact, it will commence right after this loading screen. Oh. October 2, Supreme Court. The court is now in session for the trial of Tador. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Wait, the developer is the prosecution? Representing himself. Yes. How is that fair? Dancing NG is unable to override the court decisions. How? He's the creator of this game. Is the defense ready? The defense is ready, Your Honor. I'm sorry, but Tato will be representing themselves in this trial. Alright, oh, I forgot that Tato is a silent protagonist. Well, I guess we're representing him then. Like hell you are. There, I gave you basic speech functions for this level. Have fun. Tato, kindly tell Inji exactly what you think of him. The defense is ready. Simple and to the point. Wonderful. You're still an asshole though. Yeah, sure. Let's proceed then. Tato is charged of conspiracy against the developer and possible murder of zombies. The prosecution calls the first witness to the stand. Please state your name and occupation. Commander Z of the Zombie Armed Forces. Armed? You don't have firearms. Common misconception. We're called the Armed Forces because we use our arms to attack. Mr. Fatherland, please refrain from digressing us from the trial. I agree. Moving right along here. Wait, you look identical to the other zombies we encountered. Mrs. Motherland, our people find these kind of comments offensive. It's akin to saying all you humans look the same. Well, considering this art style, everyone kinda looks the same. Crickets. As in, they look like shit. 
Mr. Zed, you claim that Tador has unlawfully slaughtered your forces, am I right? Yes, slaughtered in the full sense of the word. Our peaceful homeland became a bloodbath. Peaceful my ass. I heard that. You can read my thoughts? Yeah, they were displayed in a text box right there. We could all see it. So I can't even think privately. Mr. Zed, please provide your testimony. It'll be my pleasure. I stationed my troops at the forest as always. Nothing particularly exciting happened for the first three hours. I heard the gate open, but didn't think much of it. Suddenly, I hear my fellow zombies screaming and moaning for help. Lovely Tato right there killed them all. For no reason. They were just standing there. Zombies won't hurt anyone, not even a fly. I got damaged. They deserve a death sentence immediately. Mr. Zed, please refrain from these kinds of statements. The defense may not start the bullshit examination. Tato, you're gonna have to deal with this yourself. But I can at least tell you have to perform a good bullshit examination. Do you want to hear it? Tell me how to examine bullshit. Yeah, please tell me how to examine it. The witness will testify again, but this time you will have the option to call bullshit on any one of his testaments. Be careful not to call out neutral statements. Our statements devoid of lies. You will lose the court's trust in your case. If you screw up five times, we'll lose the case, so consider what statements you call out. That's about it, really. Go get him. Bullshit examination. Bullshit. Mr. Z, you said that your troops did nothing after noticing my arrival. Exactly, you just killed them. You also said, and I quote, zombies won't hurt anyone. Not even a fly. I stand by that. Then how do you explain the fact that, when approached, zombies pursued me and tried to kill me? Impossible. But I would never. Are you really going to take Tato's testimony here? We waited out in the forest, and we saw firsthand how zombies attacked first. Father Land is correct. Every zombie Tator killed was in self-defense. What? So, Tator is cleared of the first charge on account of self-defense. What? I do believe we have sufficient evidence to prove that zombies... No. I refuse to believe that the zombies under my command did such a thing. Attacking humans on sight is outlawed. You can deny that all you want. The court anonymously testified that your zombies were aggro. So, let's move on to our second allegation against Tito, which is... Shut the fuck up. I suspect this sort of language towards a judge could get you kicked out. I will not rest until I get definitive proof that my zombies were hostile towards humans. As I said, proof that isn't you people. I suggest you give him what he wants. We're going to be here all day otherwise. Can't you help us here? Hey, you started this whole fiasco. You solve it. So, proof that zombies are hostile. Tell them. I need objective proof that Zed zombies are hostile. Oh, this is weird. Let me see. God's pickups. That makes sense, actually. The shooting mechanics. The starting town. Let me see. Nothing in the starting town. Troops went rogue could be it, too. Let's see God's pickups first. At the start of the game, the gatekeeper explained that I could eat gods. So... So if there are health items, there's a possibility I can be damaged, meaning there are enemies. Well yes, but there are also environmental hazards. You and your friends right here had to derail the entire game so you didn't see them. Yeah, that doesn't mean my zombies were aggro. Also eating guts, seriously? I tried adding some shock value. Yeah, well it didn't work. 2 out of 10 for effort. Tato, that doesn't prove that Z zombies were hostile. Hey, Tato, think about the whole game so far. Did you experience anything that can prove the zombies are hostile? I just lost proof. 
The troops went rogue. Well, it's obvious your troops went rogue and started killing humans. That is impossible. I keep a close eye on them every day and every hour, and there is zero resistance. I would say I am their most honorable and likable commander thus far. Yes, the records show no signs of zombie resistance. Tato, that doesn't prove anything. Fuck! <laughs> this is hard for me. Oh wait. Let's let's try starting room, uh, town. Got him. When I got into the starting town, it was protected by walls. Yeah, well, all human settlements are protected by walls. Have you considered why? You people are very protective. You lose your shit every time something is out of place in your little land. Or maybe it's due to zombies. Come again? The shopkeeper and the priest talk about the end times. Tell me, Zed, how did zombies come about? I reckon there weren't any zombies before those times. We rose from our graves one day, loud noises, crazy sky, thunder, fire. Sounds like an apocalypse to me. Yes, I remember that happening a week ago. Yes, those are indeed the signs of the end times. A week ago, that's when the walls were built to keep the zombies away. And, to top it all off, the gatekeeper advised me to have a weapon at hand because the zombies outside haunt humans. Just because someone says something, that doesn't mean it's true. The guy wouldn't let me out until I got an old pipe from the shopkeeper. So, considering that the walls were built to protect survivors from zombies, that you rose from an apocalypse, that I was advised to have a weapon on me at all times, and considering Motherland's and Fatherland's testimonies, Yes, that seems like abundant evidence to prove that zombies are hostile towards humans. Trust increased, but... Thank you, Mr. Z. I think we've cleared the massacre allegation. Goodbye. Oh, he just got executed. Where did the Z go anyway? Moving right along here, our second allegation is conspiracy. I assume that's your allegation, Mr. Inji. Correct. While you managed to vindicate yourself of genocide, I reckon it'll be harder to vindicate yourself from conspiracy. What do you mean by conspiracy? Playing dumb now, huh? You know what I'm talking about. The phone call. The forest. The plans to kill me. You two were supposed to be villains. Professional killers in a land without law. Everyone sitting next to that table were supposed to have a big, epic boss fight at the end. But no. You people just had to fuck it all up, didn't you? You just weren't happy with your role, your 15 minutes of glory. Wait, you were originally supposed to be the final boss? Yes, but we've had a change of heart. What we told you over the phone and in the forest was genuine. How would you feel if you knew how and when you'd die? We broke the system to free everyone from your quest. Abolish evil and just live in peace. Acute ideology. Read Read between the lines, they just want to save themselves. Order, says the person who started an apocalypse for some bullshit epic quest solely for Tador. This is a video game, you people are not fucking real. The only one who is, is Tador. God damn it, my fourth wall is gonna be so sore after this. Order. This trial isn't about you, it's about Tador. I call Tedo to speak on behalf of the defense. A great idea. I trust Tedo completely on this. Let him have it. Don't fuck this up, Tedo. We were you from square one. We never lied. We really, truthfully, want to bring peace to these lands. Do you want to stand on the same side as Enji? This game's getting really pretentious. God damn it, this game's getting really pretentious. What? What's next? Some kind of bullshit moral message saying that the only way to win the game is not to play at all? No, I'm just... This is a very stupid game and you're all taking it way too seriously. How the fuck did we go from a comedic survival horror game to philosophical discussions about fictional characters again? Well, I guess he's right. Yes, a little self-awareness is always good. I'm sorry, people. I just wanted to make something exciting and interesting. And it seems I got from cheesy fourth wall breaks to pretentious ones. 
I guess it's the sort of thing that happens when you write by the seat of your pants. Heartwarming. So, uh, can we leave this drab courthouse and go back to that shooting game? Yeah, at least that was fun. Yeah, sure, let's kill some zombies. You know, Wenji, the writing in this game is still kinda, uh... Yeah, I feel like this Matrix idea is a bit overused. Do you want to shoot zombies or not? Come on, let's go. The good ending. Pretension ending. Fly me. Stay the fuck down. That's all the assholes dead. Well, we gotta try for another ending. Motherland and Fatherland are right. Yeah, they are right. You can't just kill thousands of natives just for your bullshit plot. Are you sure about that? Yes. You know what, my distinguished guests? This game is getting really ridiculous. Why not make it even more so? Excuse me? Tador, you are wasting the court's time. My trust and patience with you has reached zero. Wait, what? We still have five trust points. Whatever they're called. No matter, this is a court of law and it has very specific rules. If you are unable to respect them by derailing the trial every five minutes, I have no choice. Are you going to close the case? Tador is found guilty on all accusations and is sentenced to life. Sentenced to life? Are you kidding me? Wait. Don't believe him, sir. Angie's taking control of you. Sentenced to life on our space prison. Wait, what? A space prison? A motherfucking space prison? Wonders of technology. More specifically, badly written C. Code. Isn't that insanely costly? In this game's universe, sure is. But it also means that we don't have to worry about you anymore. This is preposterous. Good night. Fuck. You wake up confined to a chair in what seems to be a space pod. It is a bit bigger than you, but not my bunch. It is very uncomfortable. The only light source is a lovely, flickering, fluorescent lamp. Judging from the ramen noodles floating in the air, the pod is in zero G. You have been stripped of any and all clothes and weapons, and instead, wear an orange jumpsuit with a barcode as identification. There is a desk lamp, a bunch of ramen noodles floating in the air, a monitor in front of you and your chair. Inspect lamp. It is a regular desk lamp. Eat ramen. You repeatedly open and close your mouth, hoping to catch some stray ramen. The few noodles you manage to eat taste horrible. You are no longer hungry. This fact won't help with any puzzles or anything. I just thought you'd like to know that. Inspect monitor. Although it's right in front of you, you are tied to your chair and cannot directly interact with it. It looks like some sort of touchscreen. It's off. Break free. Your legs and arms are tied to the chair. You move around sporadically, trying to break free. After a short while, you give up. These chains are tough. However, the monitor right in front of you springs to life. Apparently triggered by your movement, the monitor lights up. It makes a short startup jingle. After booting up, it displays the following. Prisoner Tador. Time left in solitary confinement. Life sentence. If you believe this is a mistake, shout help to cause support. Shout help. You shout help. A rotating circle appears in the middle of the screen, along with the words processing. After a few seconds, a synthesized voice comes out of the monitor. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. If you experience issues, please say help. You say help again. The monitor displays it as processing again. After a few seconds, the voice says, I'm sorry, I can't help you with whelp. Do you want to search whelp online? 
say help. You say help one more time, in the slowest, most clear way you can. The computer processes your speech once more. The voice replies, I'm sorry, support is unavailable right now due to a worker's strike. Please try again later. Here's what I found, the voice replies, well is a word, often used in place of well, when a person feels no more can be said about something, used to express helplessness or dumbfoundedness. Example, well we fucked up with the space prison, now the prisoners can release themselves if they say our secret face, fucking amazing job, dancing Genji. Why does the Tamlik say fuck you, is that it? What is the secret face? Sharon Feud, why? Secret phrase accepted. The chains holding your arms and legs are released. You are now floating in the space pod. Search for a way out. You feel around the pod, looking for a way out. You hit your head on the ceiling and walls a few times. You manage to find a secret button hidden on the roof of the pod. Press it. You hit the button, and the monitor turns red, and the words Emergency Override flash on the screen. The pod accelerates downwards towards the Earth as the pod picks up more and more speed. You are dragged back to your chair, unable to move from the extreme G force. After a few seconds, you hear a loud thump. The pod crashes on the Earth and shakes everything in it. You receive multiple head wounds from the crash, but luckily, Nothing major. The, the pot opens, revealing barren desert land. Oh, hello. I've been waiting here for you to wake up for about two hours. I admit it's a lovely view, but it got boring after a while. So know that you're awake and I'll guild up. We can end this properly. Motherland and Fatherland sent you to kill me. Cool, let's have a final battle. Right here, right now, like in the old days. Come on, it'll be fun. I'll even let you make the first move. What if I don't fight here? Ron, you try to flee, but an invisible wall stops you. I'm not going to let you out that easily. Time to die. You punch him in the face. 9 damage. Fires at me with the shotgun. 25 damage. The punch versus a shotgun. I reckon I'd be an easy fight. 27 damage. Oh, Motherland and Fatherland are dead. But this shouldn't anger or sadden you. It shouldn't make you happy. These two used you for their own selfish needs. Ouch! You're doing well so far, my friend. You'll die. I'll clean this mess of a game up, and we can return to my original vision. Well, we're done here. Good night. I just got owned. God mode? Did you miss us? Let's finish the job. I'm back. What the hell, you're back? With fucking god mode? I thought I killed these rebels. Well, no matter. You want to play that way? Fine, let's dance, motherfucker. Kick Angie's ass. You gave Dance Ninja the middle finger. Emotional crit. Dance Ninja fires at you with his shotgun. Miss. I see. You weren't kidding. Fuck. He's dead. Well, I guess this is it then. It's been nice knowing you all. Good night, and good luck on your future endeavors. Oh, blue screen. Without him, there is no game. Hello, Tato. This is Motherland. I'm calling you to tell you that everything's been fine. NG pulled the plug on you, yes, but we're still alive, and we've decided to settle in the starting town. I'm taking this opportunity to do something I don't think I've ever done in my life. That being apologizing. 
I apologize for using you for our own goals against your will. I apologize for being flamboyant and rude and generally for ruining every sensible plan we had. I apologize to you for taking you into some stupid adventure that took us right back to where we were before. I should also apologize for this somewhat anticlimactic ending. Hell, at this point I should apologize for apologizing. But I just wanted to get this off my chest. This feeling has been haunting me from the moment you were convicted. There is a pretty good chance you won't even receive this transmission. And even if you do receive it, you might not accept my apology. But I just wanted you to know that I feel guilty for all that has happened. I think this is it really. I haven't informed Fatherland about doing this, and frankly I don't know if I should. The point is, I'm sorry. No sarcasm, no bullshit, no joking. Goodbye and thanks for everything. Ultra ADHD I'll see for the other ending. Speak to the lamp. You say a few words towards the lamp. It continues floating in the air. It's a regular desk lamp. It won't answer you. Discuss climate change. It's a desk lamp. If it didn't answer when you said hi to it, why do you think talking to it about politics would do the trick? Discuss up domestic. The policy. Changing the subject won't change the fact that you're just talking to yourself. And making yourself look like you have serious issues. It's a good thing you're in space and no one acknowledges that. This guy's is really plastic in conflict. Uh, you learned that the lamp advocates for a two-stage solution. Say, really now? No, not really, you fuck. Lamps can't talk. Triumphantly. You know what, maybe I'm at fault here. I'm the one who gave you the option to keep talking to the lamp, so I can't really blame you for clicking on every single one of them and seeing what happens. And frankly, all of this made me really tired. I don't feel like writing the actual text adventure anymore. So there you go. Congratulations, you beat the game. Let's call this the lamp ending or something. You made me so jaded and pissed off that you won the game. Congratulations, feel free to close it now and leave. Ultra ADHD, a very stupid video game by Alan Dancing Genji. Return. Oh, hello. I've been waiting here for you to wake up. Look, we both know what's gonna happen. We've been through this. What good is this sequence if you know every move and every twist? So I propose you fight uh, the toughest final boss fight I can conceive. Feelings. You'll see what I mean in a bit. Brace yourself. I don't know where we are. I wish I were kidding. Motherland and Fatherland out to find us at some point. They have transcended so far up the sentience ladder that I have no idea where they are or what they're doing. The good part is though, that I, it'll give us some quiet time to talk. Away from all the digital noise and the randomness and the silliness and the bullshit, I can finally have some real talk with you Zed. So uh, hi there, you know me as Dancing Inji, or just Inji, but my real name is Alan Kami. It's a strange name for non-Hebrew speakers to hear, because it often sounds like alone to them, as in, by yourself. I remember talking to this Swede a few years back, she introduced herself, and then I said hi, I'm alone. And there was this tense, awkward silence until I had an oh shit moment and quickly said, oh no, that's my name, I'm alone. So, that's why I usually go by my nickname in a lot of situations, including this game, coincidentally. The name you entered at the beginning, Zed. It's also a nickname, isn't it? 
Now that we're by your s ourselves talking, I think it's best we talk honestly without these masks and nicknames. I mean, do whatever you want, just a thought. Nice to meet you, Taylor. I'm glad you're here. So, I heard you completed every single original ending. Nice. I just wanna ask, which one was your favorite? The pretentious. Or none of them. None of them? That's sad to hear, but thanks for being honest. Ultra ADHD is not a game for everyone, and that's okay. I'm just happy you played for so long. Right, so what is Ultra ADHD about? No, really. What's the theme? The message? I heard a lot of different interpretations. In truth, it's a drunken self-insert fic. But really, what is it about? I called it a game about things, and I still stand by that. I don't know what this is really about. I wrote it all on a whim with the sole intention of putting everything I love and find funny into one game after taking too long to make a survival horror game. I'd call it a nonsense game if I was hard pressed to provide a serious definition, but then it got a bit of traction. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it was enough for me to feel like I was becoming someone. Might have gone on an ironic ego trip or two. Let's players played it, I got a lot of nice comments on each and game jolt. I even got a few messages on Twitter by people who said, I really loved your game and it inspired me to make my own. I expected a love it or hate it response and instead got a really positive one. And I'm really excited for it, but at the same time I can't help but feel a bit weird about it. At some point in 2018, I got an email from the Slam Dance Festival saying they want to showcase Ultra ADHD in their festival. And I said, sure, go ahead, and gave them all the documents they needed. And I didn't fly to the States because getting a visa is a fucking nightmare. But in my mind, I went, this shit? You want to showcase this shit? This shit? with its excuse art style drawn only because I can't model or draw. This shit that keeps making fun of its own writing because any decent piece of writing is either a reference or a crass joke. This shit that tries to vary up its gameplay so much it winds up being flat and disjointed. Really, this shit? I've been making video games with my friends since 2007. Back when Game Maker was bought by Yo-Yo Games, I remember that. Y'all think yearly game installments are ridiculous. In my prime, I had a new game out every other week. We used surprise sheets I got from shady websites and shitty MIDI covers of songs we loved. I uploaded them to the now deactivated Yo-Yo Game sandbox and it was wonderful. I was just happy to put my games out there and have people enjoy them. Broken and unfinished as they may be, and they were, oh, they were. I wish I could have this feeling of wonder and creation again. Now I believe that I'll only be happy if I make this huge narrative adventure, with lots of characters and mechanics. Why? Because fuck me. Indie games are incredible nowadays, and I want to make the same game that inspired me to make games in the first place. I abandoned so many projects because they didn't line up with my vision, and I felt they never would. Damn dude, that's heavy. Sorry about that, I'm using the ending to get things off my chest. When you make a game built on irony and satire, it's hard to talk about heavy shit. Funny thing is, this ending was in my head since 2016. If you ran from the final JRPG battle three times, NG would give up and talk to you about the development of the game until you quit the game. But now, armed with two years of retrospect, I feel like it works significantly better now than it would have been in 2016. Just stay with me here, we're gonna get a bit darker though. One of my favorite gaming moments of all time comes from Saints Row 4. You drive at Prince to a mission location, and then the both of you start singing opposites a track together. And that's such a hearty moment. I smiled the whole way through. I love this set piece to bits. 
this is a game where you are literally stuck in a simulation with superpowers. But it still finds the time to have these little bonding moments with its characters. I love media that represents itself as trashy or low bro, but reveals a heart of gold underneath. Because that's emotion and heart, and that is art. Being honest and human and genuine is art. At least if you ask me. Back in 2018, when I first wrote this ending, I didn't feel particularly proud of Ultra ADHD. I still liked parts of the game, sure. I sure did love the concept. But it was hard for me to ask people to play it as a whole. Nowadays I am legit fulfilled and proud of it, and see it as the nonsense fueled fun story that it is. Writing this ending sure helped. I spilled it a bit earlier when we talked about how heavy this entire thing is, but when you indulge so heavily in irony and jokes and memes, what you gain in comedy you lose in emotional cohesion and genuineness. I'm not saying one should release themselves from all irony and satire, just asking to keep a balance like the art I hold so dear to my heart. Looking back, I want to punch 2016 me in the goddamn face. It's embarrassing for me to think about. I was once told that feeling like shit about your past self is a very mature feeling. So I guess I'm a big boy now. You matured, games matured, it's okay. I know and I have matured, but that is a double-edged sword. As I grew up, I started watching more and more game reviewers and journalists. It made me a more opinionated and perspective person, but it also made me critical of my own creations and robbed me of that free-spirited attitude I had a decade ago. I can identify and articulate every flaw in my games, and those are the only things I am able to see. I am not saying that critics are in any way malicious, or that you can't criticize me or my creations. By all means, shit on me on Twitter, or whatever. I'm saying that it made me a lot more self-conscious about my creations, for all the positives and negatives that entails. Video games have also become such a creative and commercial force since I started making them in 2007. It's incredible. Everything is finding its audience and the indies are killing it. But it's all super competitive, which is understandable, but also a bit sad. You said you didn't like any ending, didn't you? Yeah, I'm cool with that. This game is all over the place, and random, and crass and awkward, also very cringe-worthy at point. I just want you to know I'm happy you're with still here with me right now, and thank you for listening to my TED talk. I think I covered everything. Look, if there's one piece of advice I can give you, it's this. Don't get hung up on your definitions. If you make films, you're a filmmaker. If you make games, you're a game dev. You don't need validation from anybody to do what you love. You can learn anything nowadays, just pick a direction and go for it. Ah oh, goddammit, they found us. And they got my shotgun, impressive. It's no surprise they managed to grant you gun mode so easily. I'm just relieved everything's off my chest. This has gone long enough. I want to say that I've concluded this chapter in my life. I can't stop burrowing in this game forever. Honestly, if any of you Ultra ADHD got to you in any way, then I'm satisfied. If not, thanks for being here. That shot he will kill me in one shot, as all video game shotguns would. It's been a pleasure. I hope you had fun. Good night and good luck on your future endeavors. That was the Ultra ADHD. I tried to holster my weapon, but it didn't let me. Then I tried shooting the moon.
but it still shot him in the end. I love this game, that was pretty, that was very heartwarming and wholesome. Didn't expect it from a game like this, where it's all over the place. But uh, sure to give this uh, developer support. He deserves all of it in my opinion, I enjoyed every second of this game. And my favorite was the pre pretentious ending. I just wanted to see what he would say if I said none of them. If you want to give this a try for yourself, link will be in the description and that's it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and have a good day. I'll see you around. Bye bye.